Lucas, where is he? Oh no, where'd he go? Oh, cousin It. This was not part of the plan. Don't play hide and seek with me. Oh, where are you? Where are you? Hang on, you're not here. Oh, under the Rapiculus Lelias, no. Where are you? Don't do this to me. We have got to do a Blooms for You introduction and say hi to everybody. Are you on the staging area? No. Oh, have you checked out the east side just because I've moved the rack? Oh, I can't believe this is happening, you guys. I can't believe this is happening. Welcome to the video. I don't know where Cousin It is. Oh my goodness, Blooming Alley anywhere? Is he here? Cousin It, Cousin It. I really want to shout, but I don't know if that would bother the neighbors. Uh, in the meantime, hi everybody. Uh, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, we've lost Cousin It. <laughs> Oops. Right. Okay. Let me let me go look for him. <laughs> Dude, you've got a job to do. This is a first. Maybe, maybe, maybe one more place. I found him. There you are. Oh my goodness, you had me freaked out, dude. Don't ever, ever do that again. Okay, why, why? What, what, what's going on? Why did this happen? What's with the fun and games here? Ah, yes, of course. <laughs> you scooted your big butt onto the west side because it was more protected from the wind. Now I get it. I just thought that you had up and ran away because of the horrible, horrible weather conditions and you just couldn't take it anymore and decided to find refuge at somebody else's home. But no, you still like it here. Thank you so much for staying around. You were just looking for a little bit more protection after getting bumped off your pedestal. Oh, I get it. I get it. And I'm sure that everybody else understands why you're not in your normal location. Guys, I'm so relieved. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Cousin It is fine. This location worked out. I guess he's been watching it from the opposite side of the patio and saying, I'm going to go over there. <laughs> I'm not hanging around here. It has been super, super bad weather. I had a mini tornado seems like also go through my patio. It was pretty awful. But anyway, welcome to this video. A little bit longer of an introduction. I have a lot of people to thank today. We have a lot of orchids that have plenty of blooms. I can really make a dent in my list that I have got currently running to thank as many people as possible because the next flush of blooms is going to take a while, seeing as the orchids now have to grow new growth so that they can bloom out again. Thank you so much for being here. Everybody that's not mentioned today, Cousin It still blooms for you to thank you as well for watching my videos and supporting my channel. Now that I've gotten over the shock as to where Cousin It is, let's go and see other beautiful blooms and whose name came up this time around. A dedication to welcome in a new Orchid Ninja. Thank you so much, Julie's Orchids. julie son. Orchid Ninja, it's official, and I cannot tell you in a few short words just how much I appreciate that support. Thank you so much, Orchid Ninja, Julie Sun. To help me along a little bit with my gratitude, my thank you, I want to dedicate to you my blooming of this Leptotis bicolor. These are the first blooms I have seen in two years. So they're pretty, pretty special for a very, very special lady. My first ever blooming was five blooms, but I am not going to be so bold as to take credit for those blooms. I think she was just having a stress blooming because since then she has had to acclimate. Didn't go so well the past two years. I thought I was gonna lose her. We kept at it and just like Orchid Ninjas, we stayed true to the cause. <laughs> this Leptotis bicolor has decided with her one teeny tiny little chubby needle back here to bloom once again. And well, guess what? Orchid Ninja Julie Sun, these vanilla fragrant, highly, highly fragrant blooms, they bloom for you to say thank you so much for becoming an Orchid Ninja. They've been open approximately a week now, and even though they're a little bit lopsided, <laughs> oops, you can see that I also made a little kind of a rig for them. That's why I put supports into my pots, even though usually I don't need them. These blooms would otherwise be lying on the rim of the pot, and well, for that reason, they opened up a little bit wonky, shall we say, because that lip should be down here. <laughs> and yeah, the thing with this, you can see how tiny the spike is. 
right there and then the peduncle is ever so long so yeah it's a little bit of a delicate maneuver to get these buds to come out without blasting them by handling them too much but here we are they have a better representation as a dedication than any words that i could express to you to say thank you once again orchid ninja julie sun from julie's orchids whose channel I shall be linking in the description. Julie is heading into fall. We have got the winds of change. Maybe you can see in the background how blustery it is sometimes as we are heading into spring. I just couldn't wait because I wasn't sure how my little Leptotus would hold on to those blooms and I really, really, once again, wanted to use them to say thank you to you, Orchid Ninja, Julie Sun, for being so supportive of my channel. This is unexpected, but it is so welcome. This is the full spike now of my Epidendrum Embraei crossed with Epidendrum Capricorn Nu. Back when I was doing the International Orchid Day video, I said she was a sequential bloomer and that the back blooms would fall off relatively quickly before new buds opened and then a few days later she proved me wrong and all the buds opened in one go I still have blooms in the back and it's looking beautiful and I'm getting so carried away sorry I want to dedicate this spike and these blooms to Canadian heaven and betta pal fish they are so cute they are so tiny that is why two names. I have taken a lot of footage on a day that it wasn't that windy because these are so so small. We need to get in, have a better look at them to appreciate the fairy kind of detail that these blooms have. I would like to believe there is a fragrance but I think it's my mind playing tricks on me. I would like to say I'm getting the hint of apricot. It is very very faint but when you look at the colors of these blooms well, apricot comes to mind, right? So I think my brain is assimilating the color with a fragrance because you really have to get in close and then you're even not quite sure, is that a fragrance or isn't it? But my goodness, this orchid has been a fight from the moment that she arrived in my collection. Being a reed stem epidendrum, being a hybrid, I expected so much more out of this orchid. I thought she would literally take off but she is a very small growing orchid. There's not much height here, maybe 20 centimeters. And you see, I have the spike here from last year. That only gave me like three blooms, but it was a first time bloomer back then. Now I can see the potential of what this little orchid is capable of with this whole cluster of blooms. When the blooms were falling off in the back here, they lasted about three days, not very long lived at all. But considering their super, super delicate structure, I must say that I'm not surprised. The petals are just slivers of something. They don't even look like petals. They look more like some kind of an antennae. And it just brings me to the point that little fairies are enjoying these blooms just because of their minute size. I must say, when the orchid itself wasn't performing, I wasn't too impressed about everything. But now that she seems to be coming onto her own in the last four years, I know not much to show for now when I see these blooms and what she looks like in full bloom. Yeah, this is magical. I love it. And I am so happy to dedicate this spike that is worthy of dedication to Canadian heaven and Betta Pal Fish to say thank you to the two of you so much for your support on my channel for so very long. I sincerely hope that you are into the delicate, into the dainty, and into something that looks so charming. That is my opinion anyway. She looks charming. The coral, the apricot, all those flowers intermixed. Yeah, I'm pleased with her. Very glad that I stuck it through. So Canadian Haven and Betta Pie Fish, my Epidendrum Embraei crossed with Epidendrum Capricorn Nu. She blooms for the two of you to say thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel.
Salumnia Firm White, second spike. Very happy to be able to dedicate these blooms to Diana Bonilla and Marsha Moore, second spike. Look at that, isn't that so cute? With the little pink skirt there, here is the first spike. Let me see. There you go, a little older the blooms. But I'm telling you, it took a very, very long time for these blooms to open. But you can see the difference between old and new. Firm white is paling back to the white. They were also pink around the lip at the bottom. And now that they're aging even more, they're reverting back to white. And the cute little new one is all pink and sweet. I love this. I love this when you look at the orchid as a whole and you see the two different variations, it makes for so much interest. But just to make sure that I said the names correctly, this spike and these blooms are dedicated to Diana Bonilla and Marsha Moore to thank the two of you for your very much appreciated support on my channel. I sincerely hope you are into Tulumnia blooms. This Tulumnia has as yet to start any kind of new growth. Clearly still very, very focused on the blooms. And we should stay focused on the blooms. Thank you very much. Yeah, because you know what? That is what this is all about. To say thank you to all of you as your names come up in the list that I have. When I see new names in the comments or I can identify a new subscriber. So having had your names come up, Diana Bonilla and Marsha Moore, Tolumnia Firm White, the second spike blooms for you. Thank you so, so much for your support on my channel. It's a pity that I have to showcase this gorgeous Dendrobium nobili in the shade. But if we want to appreciate some of the detail, then in the shade she has to go because in the sun <laughs> or where she could possibly catch too much reflection from the white facade, everything that you see here will start to fade away. I am going to make a huge dent to say thank you to so many people. I'm taking advantage of this amazing blooming to get to you sooner rather than later. So thank you to Makeup Mobster, JD, Eva Lane Bethune, Tropical Flowers and Plants, Almar Castro, Dolores Hensley, Glenda Gutierrez. This name is Korean, but I put it into the translator and it comes out as Abada. Later Cold, Susan Jackson, Jeffrey Poirier, Jeanette Del Valle, Kevin Basafal, Kazlur Baksh, Julia Paust, Lloyd Abello, Marcy, three stars. I would give you five, but Marcy, three stars. Ingrid Roberts, Julie Norquest, and Donna Kallenberger. I know this is a long list, but it is such a gorgeous orchid that I can really go to town with saying thank you so very, very much to all of you for your support on my channel. You have been here a while. Your names came up. Dendrobium nobly came up. And my goodness, in your face, gorgeousness and in your nose. Freesia fragrance. You see where the growth here got a little bit more light? The blooms have a little bit more detail and more of a pink blush to them, as opposed to the ones that were a little bit further back right here. There we go. They're pure white. But all in all, the whole thing is just an incredible pot of spring goodness. I have absolutely no qualms about this orchid being one of those commercial hybrids that you can get in the big box stores, you know, that people might say, nah, that's too common for me. Nothing common about this orchid. She has finally come and grown onto her own. And from here on in, this is what I'm expecting of her year after year after year. Because as my list is still not complete, and should I complete my subscriber list before I get new names, then we are going right back to the top again. And we're going to start from the top and work our way down one more time. And this orchid gives me the opportunity to do that. So I'm going to say those names once again because you guys have supported my channel and I really appreciate it. Thank you once again, Makeup Mobster, JD, Eva Lane Bethune, Tropical Flowers and Plants, Almar Castro. Dolores Hensley, Glenda Gutierrez, Abada, that is the Korean name, Leta Cold, Joseph Rapp, Suzanne Jackson, Jeffrey Poirier, Jeanette Del Valle, 
Kevin Wasserfall, Kazlur Baksh, Julia Paust, Loida Bello, Marcy with the three stars, nope, five stars in my opinion, Ingrid Roberts, Julie Norquist, and Donna Kallenberger. My Dendrobium Nobili, complex hybrid, all the blooms, and that fantastic fragrance of freesia, the spring in the air kind of freesia, the makes you want to go in and smell more kind of freesia, the heady, heavy perfume when the sun shines on them. These blooms, all of this is for you because thank you so, so much for your support on my channel. I am standing with some sun shining on my back. Oh, this feels amazing. I was almost close to giving up with regards to being able to dedicate the remainder of my Maasai Red blooms because of the appalling weather once again, but we are on time. This is only one spike and I shall now switch the camera so that we can see a lot more of the pristine fresh blooms that have opened up. There they are, clean, beautiful, presentable, the way Colmenara Maasai Red Blooms should be. So let's get to say some thank yous to Sandy and Justin, Bill Walters, DJ Guevara, Papier Restauro, Julia Scherer, Kay Furs, Mateusz Slovakiewicz, BC, Glala Blala, Savi Francis, Linda P. Knox, Carol Cloud, Nutu Balan, Rosetta Paquette, Zulu Lima 3375, Janina Carlona, Mansuo Zao. There we go. I am so happy that I have a break in the weather to be able to say thank you to all of you so very, very much for your support on my channel. And I'm going to call Sandy out on this one. And I want you to know that I've added you once again into the thank you list. Not just because you're always here, you're always commenting, but I want you to look forward to your Colmenara Must I Read. And for that reason, you are included in this list just so that you have that visual of the beautiful, beautiful, velvety, dark red blooms in your mind for when yours arrives. So Sandy, take heart. Your Colmenara will be back in your collection very, very soon. In the meantime, what I have left of my fresh blooms that have just opened, know that she blooms for you. Thank you, Sandy, so much. Also, Justin, Bill Walters, DJ Guevara, Papier Restauro, Julia Scherer, Kay Furs, Mateos Slovakiewicz, BC, Glala Blala, Savi Francis, Linda P. Knox, Carol Cloud, Nutu Balan, Rosetta Paquette, Zulu Lima 3375, Janina Carlona, and Mansuo Sao. You are all very, very much appreciated. And I shall just repeat myself. Thank goodness I get to do this. We are cutting it really, really close. I like to present and show my blooms when there's still some buds to open because that means the rest of them are the way they should look. Nice, clean, and presentable. The thing with Colmenara, though, is, you see that? A little bit of wind, a little bit of disturbance, and the white pollen cap just pops off. Here we still have some. I love it with that white pollen cap. Unfortunately, white pollen caps are not long-lived, which is a big shame. But at least we have clean lips. I can't get enough of that rich velvet. Just beautiful in my opinion. So all of you, thank you so very, very much for supporting me here, for subscribing and for commenting. You are so appreciated. I hope everybody is doing well in their part of the world. My Vanderglossum Alexandra. Well, what a beautiful, beautiful little vandacious orchid. This orchid is dedicated to my daughter. This is her first time blooming and I think it is only fitting seeing as I bought it because of my daughter's name being Alexandra. I am dedicating my first spike of Vanderglossum Alexandra to Alexandra. She puts up a lot with me. She has a lot of things to deal with, mainly my silence. 
She's a busy young lady. I don't want to interfere in her schedule too much, but let me tell you, when I need her, she steps up and does take care of things. My silence is not because I don't want to talk to her. We actually have some very funny, very long conversations, and we have such a good time together when we do go out for lunch. Now, can you believe that the last time I went out for lunch with my daughter was on the 29th of February in 2020? Yes. That day was a leap year day. And usually on the 29th of February, I always do something because it'll always stick in your head as a memory and you'll never forget that date. Well, we went out, we had a fabulous lunch, which lasted all the way up to four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> That's how much fun we have together. So I appreciate the fact that when we're together, it's not like a mom and daughter thing. It's just like, do you want another one? Sure, where are we gonna go next? I don't know, where do you wanna go? Well, let's go check this out. Sure, it's amazing. So the 29th of February, 2020, the last time we were seen out in public together at a beautiful restaurant that overlooks the entire Costa del Sol. It was a fabulous day and one week later, the lockdown was official. Needless to say, I had no idea how that day, 29th of February, would mark itself in my memory for more than one reason. Just the special day, but everything that came after that, including my channel. And my daughter has been cheering me on in the background quietly, knowing that I was getting a little bit flustered trying to learn all the ins and outs of what's going on. But I cannot tell you how much I appreciate and love that young lady for her spirit, her kind heart, her feisty personality. <laughs> I wonder where she got that from, but all and everything about her. I cannot be more pleased to have received this orchid from Tokyo World Mark and from a Karen Orchids in Belgium because finally I had an orchid with my daughter's name on it. And not just the Phalaenopsis that I call Bubblicious, but real Alexandra. This Little one is dedicated to you, little one. She has a beautiful perfume. She is super feminine. Her blooms are delicate, but super long lasting, just like you. And I am so appreciative of having this orchid in my collection just as much as I appreciate having you in my life. Thank you for everything that you do for me. Most of all, thank you for everything you do for me that I don't ask you to do for me. And most of all, thank you so much for being in my life. Love you, Bubba. Oh boy, that was close. I was just about to get scolded. <laughs> the shock of not finding him where he's supposed to be and the relief of seeing him here all safe and sound. I forgot his glasses. Everybody, thank you so very, very much for watching. If you have not subscribed or commented on my channel ever before, please do so. Let me know that you are here because my list is ongoing and I would like to thank you personally in the future when a specific bloom opens and your name then comes up. So let me know you're here. Thank you so much for being here. I wish you a beautiful, beautiful day wherever you are in the world on one condition though, please. Let you stay safe. Take care. Bye.